Today we're gonna talk about credit card mistakes and the debt trap. So if you look at this, making only the minimum payments is what most people do for credit cards. So according to the National Bureau of Economic Research website, approximately one third of credit card holders opt for paying only the minimum amount each month. Here's a common scenario that leads people into the credit card debt trap. So when you use your card, you do purchases that exceeds your immediate budget. And then you decide to make the minimum payment for that particular month. Over time, this becomes a habit. To put it in this perspective, consider a scenario where you have a seemingly modest amount of balance of a few thousand dollars, which is could relate to most people. The reality is, is that this balance can accumulate more than double the original amount over a year's due of the curl of interest, meaning is you can keep stacking it. And the credit card companies are company there to make money. If they are there to make money, they are going to jack your interest rates and keep making money off it. It is unwise to maintain a high balance or max out your credit card. And it's not solely due to the costly interest that you occur. Because think about it, a lot of people use credit cards. They use it and basically you're spending money that you currently don't have, but you are and or the credit card company is betting that you'll pay it off in the future. Uh, this is most economic countries operate, especially for credit card businesses. That's why it's really profitable for a lot of credit card companies to have a really nice balance sheet because they make a lot of money off the consumer. You can instead of carrying cash, why you just swipe a credit card, pay later on down the line. So. How does this affect your credit? Your credit utilization ratio, which measures how much of your credit line that you are using, plays a pivotal role in calculating your credit score. So lenders will take this utilization seriously when deciding or whether or not to extend a new line of credit to you. High utilization rates may signal to them that you are not managing your debt responsibility. But to avoid such assumptions, to strive to keep your credit balanced below 30% utilization, if not lower. That's a recommended amount. Most of the time, I'm pretty sure almost 100% of the time, people has experienced fraudulent activity, which can be financially burdensome to ignore because you cannot ignore those, those will harm you down the line. It's crucial to avoid unexpected charges or fees. So you should take a moment to pursue the fine print on your credit card statement. It just contains valuable information, introductory rates, and balance transfer fees, and other potential charges. So if you keep this in mind and read what do each credit card does, because each credit card has a different type of fee, has every different type of rate, and at the same time, different type of points. So the points will actually accumulate over time and help you can maybe get you a vacation one day, maybe pay for your gas. Because the whole point to get people signed up for a bunch of different credit cards is because of points. The point system is what drives people to use cards instead of cash. Since are not all credit cards are cut from the same cloth, meaning every different cloth has a different material, just as certain clothing brands, they cater to different financial objectives. If you are contemplating on getting a new card, then invest the time in researching the best options that align for your needs and lifestyle. Because credit cards, if you read from the fine print, different type of needs, different type of lifestyles, different type of purchases. Like one can be designed for travel, another one can be designed for eating. Merits. Acquiring a card is a financial commitment, so make sure it ensures and your, aligns your goals seamlessly for your financial goals. So if you're trying to build credit, then don't get a card that's specifically made for eating. A lot of people try to gather points and realize that to get those points, money has to go out. And money come, goes out, only a little bit comes back in in points. So keep that in mind. Now, when you, if, you, if you're looking to earn those type of rewards, ideally, your argument should be regular shopping habits. So basically, you don't have to get food, maybe every now and then you want to indulge yourself in clothing, then that's the time to accure those points coming in and accuring those rewards. You're not really trying to gain anything substantial. You just want to make it easier for you to gain those points coming in naturally, not basically going out your way to get those points specifically anything on your daily routine and just make it easier by getting more benefits coming back. For example, investing. Consider in this scenario, 
If your typical monthly expenditure on a card offering 1% cash back is $1,000, you'll earn $10 in rewards. But if you spend $1,500 on the pretense that the additional rewards will justify expense, then you risk adding $500 extra dollars to your credit card just to earn that extra $5 in rewards. Now the question is, when you spend the extra $500 for the extra $5 cash back, was that extra $500 that you spend worth it? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Now, in this case, you could apply for multiple credit cards, which a lot of people do, and a lot of people from different channels do cover this topic. So you apply for different and multiple credit cards simultaneously. While the allure of credit card rewards can be tempting, it is crucial not to rush and apply all the credit cards you desire at once. Now, if you look, is the reason why is pretty simple because it affects your credit every time you open some type of credit card. So when each credit card application initiates, it has a hard inquiry on your credit report, which result in a slight decrease in your credit score. So if you're, like I mentioned earlier, you're trying to, maybe suddenly you're trying to get a house, maybe you're trying to make a large purchase, get a car loan, this will affect it. And when you start having multiple inquiries coming all out once, it's a warning sign. That behavior gives a red flag to to loaners and the ones who is issuing you a credit card. It's advisable to wait at least 90 days between credit card applications. Waiting for a minimum of six months between applications allows even more time for negative effects of each inquiry to dissipate from your credit report. So if you guys found this video really helpful, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. And I hope I see you guys next time. See ya. Peace.